Have you ever had one of those days, a day where you just couldn't get out of bed? This is a day that you're not going to work because you love your job. It's a day that you'd rather be doing anything else but work. But you do get out of bed because you have bills to pay. When you get to work, you're late and your boss has to cover for you. And on top of that, your first customer is not a happy customer. What do you do? Now wait, I know that there are some of you that love your job, that every time you think of it, you feel like you're skipping through a field of flowers. That's great. I envy you. But even if you are one of those Betty bounce lots or Fun Guy Frank, or even a Perky Pat, you're still going to run into those crabby customers. So again, what do you do? Do you remember those old commercials about crossing the street? where they emphasize, stop, look, and listen. That's what I'd like you to do with a difficult customer. First, stop. Remember that just because we're having a bad day, it doesn't mean this customer caused it. So stop, take a breath, and with a smile, look. Sometimes we can look at people and gauge the right way to respond. Do they look like they want to fight? Or do they look like they just want their issue resolved? Sometimes a customer has a difficult problem, but they want to be helpful and part of the solution. So before you respond, look for visual clues that can help you resolve the issue in a manner that enables us to either keep or gain a faithful customer. Next, listen. Aren't there times you just need to vent? You just want to get all that frustration out. Sometimes that's all a difficult customer needs. They want to tell you why they're upset. So listen before you respond. Find out what the problem is. Don't make assumptions. One of the most difficult skills in communication is listening. One of the most useful tools in listening is repeating. Repeat back to the customer what you're hearing them say what the problem is. They'll tell you if you're wrong. If you are, listen again and repeat. If you're listening, you will eventually get it right. And then both of you will be looking to cross the street together. Next, empathize with the customer. So you should be able to understand and identify with the customer's frustration. Tell them that sincerely. Let them know you understand what the problem is and how it could be an issue. Okay, let's switch metaphors. We've talked about crossing the street. So now let's talk about going on a trip. Because we just stopped, looked, and listened, we should be in agreement with the customer about what the issue is. Now, everyone involved should be on board to travel to the place we call problem solved. Now, I doubt that the customer wants to deal with the problem any longer than they have to. And you want to deal with it as quickly as possible, so you both have a common goal, and you both want a quick resolution. So how do we get there? The customer might have a way in mind, but you might be restricted by company policy or a number of other reasons. So the next step should be ask questions. See what would make the customer happy. What would resolve the issue for them? Then offer solutions. You've been hired to think on your feet. Be creative. Keep in mind what you can do and what you can't do. But above all, be positive. Nobody wants to hear what you can't do. So tell them what you can do for them. Do you know the cliche, the customer is always right? Do you know why we use cliches? Because they're usually true. Now, does that mean that if the customer says an item is free because there's no price tag on it, that we give it to them? No. But they are right, it is such a great deal that they'll feel like they're getting it for free. Here's an example. You work in a restaurant, and you have a customer that complains, waiter, there's a fly in my soup. How do you respond? Do you say, no, that's an olive? Or do you respond, that's terrible. Let me take this bowl back and get you a fresh bowl. Then, when you're in the back, ask them to remove the olives. For this example, the supposed fly was an olive. 
but rather than argue with the customer, the soup was sent back for a more pleasing alternative. Hopefully, the customer leaves feeling the waiter sympathized with this problem and was on his side. The waiter gets a customer who feels that they were listened to. Now, let's recap. We've stopped our first emotional response to look at the problem. Then we listened and made sure we understood the problem and empathized with the customer to let them know we did listen and we understand their point of view. We asked questions to see what would be an agreeable solution for the customer. We offered solutions, not roadblocks to the problem that fit within our guidelines. We did this with a positive attitude that said we can fix this problem. Now, more questions. Did you fix the problem? Ask the customer. Are they happy? Are they at least satisfied with the solution presented? Now, will you please every customer? No, but it's our responsibility to make sure that we do everything we can to make sure their experience with our company is a pleasant one, or at least not too painful. Last, when in doubt, ask. You have supervisors, managers, bosses. They're there to help you. When you can, ask their opinion. Get their help. You're on the front line when it comes to helping customers. They expect you to deal with almost everything. But they also know there are some situations that you're going to need help with. So ask. Hopefully, these suggestions will help you deal with the occasional difficult customer.